I've been doing a lot of survival building recently, and as much as I enjoy it, I always get the urge to see what I can build if I can cheat and use creative. So today, I'm going to be starting off on a flat world I'm just going to build. But what should I build? I know. Just kidding. What I'm actually going to do is ask my YouTube friends what I should build. This isn't because I'm lazy and can't think of any ideas. <laughs> Definitely not that. It's because I want to challenge myself to try and take all their ideas and make them work together in one massive build. Which, knowing a lot of them, these are going to be some weird ideas. To make sure this doesn't last forever, I'm going to keep building until I hit the 24 hour mark in game. So here we are in a fresh new world. I need to do a few commands first. And let's ask our first YouTuber what we should build. And we're gonna start with my wife Lizzie, AKA LD Shadow Lady. Hello Joel, my challenge should you choose to accept it is to build a fleet of aircraft flying through the sky. All of them should be different colors and different shapes. That is all. Right. Okay, that's interesting. Something I've never really built before, like ever? So I guess this is going to be a challenge. However, I've got my own take on this challenge and I'm going to start off by not building a plane and here's why. If I just built a load of planes by themselves, they would look a bit weird just floating on this flat world. So I decided, you know what? Let's build a mountain range to fly these planes above of. So I used some world edit brushes and we got making this wacky mountain range, smoothed it all out, added in some grassy area underneath, which took about 45 minutes in total. And we ended up with this weird monstrosity, which then we had to paint. I started off by doing the top bit with some stone and then I added some grass on this bottom bit here. And we got sort of, you know, merging them together before changing that entirely, adding in a bit of new sand in the middle and smoothing that out. and then we also got adding in some different textures such as tough some deep slate we also did some moss and some grass and then i used another brush and just went around the entire thing and changed it all entirely because i hated how it looked and then we added in some water and finally bone milled it all and this is what we end up with it looks pretty cool i think not the best thing i've ever built but looks pretty good the bone mill down here is a bit ridiculous though i used a brush and everything is like too high grass so i might see if i can change that with a command quickly okay i think i've managed to fix it somehow it looks a bit better now we're nearly an hour and a half in already and we still haven't started on the plane so i guess we should start on that now they all have to be different and different colors um okay let's start out first with a biplane and i don't know why but i decided mangrove wood would be a great one for this and you can see me experimenting around quite a lot here until we got the final design down it turned out looking like a biplane. I then moved on to another plane here. This one is yellow. I don't know what type of plane it is because it looks kind of weird and not like a real plane, but we added some sandstone on. I then got working on a plane up here and this plane is kind of like a jet except it's got propellers and it's pulling a banner. And the banner, of course, says Queen Lizzie because this is Lizzie's challenge. At this point, I was Googling different types of planes and I thought this one kind of looked a little bit like some sort of fighter plane from the war. I then made this one here, which is, I'm not really sure what type of plane, but it it looked like one I googled and it's yellow and made of bamboo. This one here, I thought, you know what, let's make one that's leaning sideways. That'd be fun. Bit of a challenge, but we got there in the end. And then we saved the biggest plane for last here and I thought I'd go for another propeller plane, but this one is a big boy. It's got the wings on the top. I don't know what type of plane it is, but it's got four propellers. And that's all our planes done. We're currently at the three hour mark and I'm pretty happy with our progress so far. We got all these planes flying around. I especially think the diagonal one is pretty cool. I think it kind of adds to all the planes in general. But my favorite one is this one here. I think this one looks the coolest by far. So we've got our planes. Now I need another challenge and we're going to ask Jimmy Solidarity. Hi, small man Joel. It's big man Jim here. Um, as you could probably tell, it's, it's coming into spooky season with it being October and everything. And what I would like you to build is a big pumpkin with J carved into the front. You think you could do that for me? Big man Jim, big man pumpkin. See ya, have fun. Right, okay. A pumpkin with J for Joel? Or does he mean Jim? I'm gonna go for Joel. Uh, yeah, sure, Jim. Doesn't really go with the theme so far. 
but let, let's uh, let's give it a go. So I spent some time messing around with World Edit trying to get the right shape. I started off with spheres and I thought, no, that doesn't look right. So I went for this sort of like weird ellipsoid overly type thing here. I then trimmed the edges of it as well because it was a bit too circular and pumpkins aren't circular. But it still looked way too neat to be a pumpkin. So I started adding on this orange concrete here and I wanted to make like a realistic pumpkin sort of effect, leaving the sort of stripy lines which you kind of see on pumpkin by using the orange terracotta and using the orange concrete over the top of it to, you know, make it look like an actual pumpkin. And you can see this took quite a while here. Over an hour of placing orange concrete, in fact. I then used a brush which was orange wool with a mask on the orange concrete to make it look, you know, a little bit more textured. And I also painted over some of the orange terracotta with a regular terracotta paint brush before I finally finished off the pumpkin with a nice green stalk. But obviously we're not leaving this pumpkin in the middle of the air so I cut it and moved it over towards the mountains and then the pumpkin was finally ready for some carving so I made this J template there then cut it out and sort of added in some glowstone quite deep inside before adding a little black outline we also added in these vines slash sort of grassy bits coming up out of the pumpkin as well and then I used some more world edit brushes to add this sort of mossy podzel area underneath and here you go Jimmy the carved pumpkin with the J in it honestly the J looks a bit small, but I think the pumpkin looks really good. I'm really happy with how this turned out. We've just passed the five hour mark, as you can see. And although it looks a bit weird, the area is coming along nicely. We're now going to ask Whip to set us a challenge. Let's see what he wants us to build. Okay, Joel, I want you to build a giant pelican holding up whatever else you're building. <laughs> what? Um... <laughs> For goodness sake, Whip, a pelican. Pelicans don't even have hands. How am I going to hold it up? Can't hold up this entire thing with a pelican. It is huge. That would take up the rest of the 24 hours. How about instead I make a pelican hold up one of the planes? Oh my gosh, I suck at building things that aren't buildings or inanimate objects. How on earth am I going to build this pelican? I guess we're going to have to hold one of the planes in its beak. There's going to be a lot of alterations in this one. And oh boy, did this take a long time to build. We started off with the beak, as you can see here, going around the plane. Start with the massive bottom beak that these things have, and then working on the top beak. I looked at a picture of a pelican online, and that's what I based this build off. We then made the sort of shape. I made its neck too fat at first, and then we got filling in the neck, using lots of white wool mainly, and then you'll see a little bit later, we paint it a little bit to make it look a bit different. Adding in one wing on each side, and then I just world edit copied to make it identical on each side and add in a bit of grey. But I wanted to make it look like the plane had crashed, so I set it on fire and added in the sort of smoke with some glass here. Before we moved the pelican over to by the mountains, and we got terraforming some of the area around it, making sure it was in inside this water here and adding some rocks in as well just you know add a bit of texture but I'm still not happy with it and we are now approaching the eight hour mark that's how long this thing took to build and I'm still not kind of happy with the area around it this thing is just so blooming big that it's just kind of hard to like decorate the area around it and make it look good I think we'll work on that in a bit when we work on the next build but you can see here the plane which I actually had to rebuild because I destroyed it by accident. On fire, in the pelican's mouth. He's swallowing that thing. We got the smoke coming off it. It is uh, it's a pelican holding a plane. Obviously, it's not holding the rest of the map. This is how big this pelican is just holding a small plane. Imagine if it held like the pumpkin, for example. But seeing as I've never really built a bird before, I think it's turned out okay. It looks pretty cool. We've got some smooth quartz in there. We've got this gray wool. It's okay. It's pretty cool. But what a bizarre landscape this has become. Next up, we're asking my friend Gemini Tay for a challenge. Please don't be another living animal. Hello, smallish beans. I require a place to practice PvP, please. I would like a Roman Colosseum. Nothing less, nothing more. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, Gemini does like to slay, so that makes sense. A Colosseum. You know what? That's worked out quite well. I think we could fit that 
in this centre bit here. It's going to look a bit out of place with the giant pelican, the planes, and a giant pumpkin, but I think we can make it work. So I used some world it to experiment with some circle sizes and ended up choosing this size here. So it was going to be quite a large coliseum, and I went a bit crazy with the pillars at first and added way too many in. And I also thought, let's make them out of granite. That'll look really cool. Granite and terracotta. I hated it. So I changed it straight away to some diorite and some stone. And then I sort of, you know, mixed it up a little bit, added in some white concrete, added on another layer. And here you can see me using some world edit to copy and paste this round and rotate it so that it's a full massive circle. Once that was done, we got to work on the roof, as this is not going to be an old abandoned coliseum. This is going to be a working coliseum where Gemini can slay some people. We use some different kinds of textures here, some mud bricks, some spruce, and also some andesite to finish it off. I then got working on the interior. Yes, we're going to build some stands here. We've got these sort of like upper stands at the top here with this sort of balcony cover over the top of those and then we've got another stand there and finally we've got like two stands on either side for like the really rich people maybe the emperor of the roman Colosseum. i don't know i then finished it off by using some world edit to copy and paste it all around we then worked on the floor and i went for a few different designs before going for a funky little pattern spreading out from the middle here and there was also a little bit to do on the inside here we made it look a bit more interesting rather than just the spruce wood and added in some little sections that like look kind of cool I guess and also some leaves and some lights until finally I did a little bit of terraforming and also added in a path all the way around it and with our new Coliseum done we have hit the 12 hour mark I'm really happy with this thing it is not functional it is just purely decorative so like none of these places actually lead anywhere but it's really cool down here. I think this would be a great place to fight. Although I have noticed if you are a spectator, you can't really see much. Oops, oh well. It's hard to build real seats in Minecraft. And I've decided that at the moment, things just aren't linked up very well. We're going to fix that at some point. But let's wait till we have the next build. And our next challenge is from none other than Mythical Sausage. Daddy Joe, hi, Sausage here. Listen, I'm challenging you to build your version of the house from up. But instead of using balloons, I want you to use a giant wiener. Or a hot dog, as other people call it. Thank you. See you later. Mwah. Okay. Interesting. I wouldn't expect anything less from the sausage man himself. Whereabouts can we build this, though? That's that's a tricky one to try and fit in. Maybe we put it behind the pumpkin up here. I guess I can always move it around later as it's going to be floating in the air. So I have actually built the up house a long time ago, but we've got a lot of new woods now and cool, fun blocks such as bamboo. So I added a lot of that and tried to recreate the up house as accurately as I could. It's not very big, but that's okay because what is big is the hot dog holding it. Yes, we've got the bun, we've got the mustard, we've got the ketchup. We are going to move it now, though, as this is a very awkward spot. I want to first try just over here. Looks a bit out of place. <laughs> Uh, maybe let's go in front of the planes. I think we can leave it there for now. I'm happy with that. It's one of the smaller builds. If you look at it in comparison to these three, or four even, this one is definitely nowhere near as big, but I'm very happy with it. I think it's turned out really cool. Next up, though, we have Grian, and, um, you know Grian, what he's like. This is what he asked for first. Hey, Joel, can you do an exact replica of your credit card with the details and the three numbers on the back? Real. Obviously not going to do that, so the second option was this. I want you to do your phone number as it is with the area code and everything. Again, don't feel like doing that. So you don't mean just do anything then? Alright then, I want you to build an exact manifestation of how you feel about me. He can never be normal, can he? He can never be normal. What? 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 I... I don't know where to begin, but I guess we should. Right, let's give this a go. So I didn't know what to start with, so I decided let's just build Grian himself. And I built him sitting down, of course, and he's holding 
a load of TNT, because why not? But obviously this isn't the full manifestation. This is just a statue of Green. We're gonna actually move him elsewhere, just next to the Coliseum here. And then let's get a world edit brush. Let's sort of put a little thing for him to sit on. And of course, change it all to TNT. Then let's build something behind him, which is more of a manifestation, like he said. So behind him, I got using some TNT to blow up these craters here. I wanna say this is green in game and not green in real life. If it was green in real life, I'd probably build something to do with skiing. But either way, we built these mountains with lava coming down and then we built this massive fire in the middle with lots of smoke coming off of it and also some lightning coming down as well because this is what came to mind when I think of green. However, I think there's an other side of green, the side of green that you don't see and that is behind where we have a nice lovely flower. We've got some greenery, we've got some flowers around and then we've also got some trees because it's, it's just a nice little area, isn't it? And it's a, it's a, a fun little area. It's the, the other side of green you don't see in his videos where he's not being chaotic. So obviously not my telephone number. The only thing I'm, I'm not a big fan of actually now is the lightning looking at that. I'm gonna get rid of that. But I'm actually really happy with this build. There's a lot of world edit involved as you can probably see in the time lapse, but it's chaos. It's amazing. The fire especially is looking pretty good, seeing as I just sort of work that together with some world edit quickly. And where the other green is, is behind these mountains here, just chilling, sitting in his flower field, having a lovely time. Ah, oh, great. But from one chaotic person to another, as I've asked Ollie to give me a suggestion next. Joel, it's me, Ollie, your friend, uh, a dad like you, to build me a big monkey. But not just any monkey, I want him climbing. Whatever builds there are in this plot that you've not told me, because you're a sneaky little scamp, I want you to make it climb him. I want it to be big, and I want it to be clambering up, King Kong style. Give him a crown as well, I want him to have a crown. Yeah. <laughs> Right, okay. That's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. That's pretty good. We've only got really like one building where we could build that and that's the Colosseum here. I guess I could build it climbing the neck, uh, but I'm not going to do that. Maybe I could work in one of the planes as well. This is turning out like actually pretty good. I might grab one of the planes and put it in his hands. But a monkey, oh gosh. I've never built a monkey before. This is going to be tricky. And in case you're wondering, we're around the 15 hour mark now, which is not 0.62 days. I did the math so you didn't have to. So nearly two thirds of the way through, let's build this monkey. I started off by building this sort of little shape of a monkey off the side there and I decided it was too small. So I decided to add these towers on around the Colosseum and then we got working on a bigger monkey. This one here, I started out by making the shape of the body, then sort of filling it in and making it, you know, look a bit more monkey shape. No head at the moment, but you'll see I'll add that in very shortly. We had a little chest bit, and then we added a face, and then, of course, a smile, and finally the crown, which took quite a while to get right. But look, a monkey. And you know what? Sometimes I surprise myself. I'm really happy with this. I think this looks quite good. I normally don't build things like this because, you know, I just don't even try. But because of this challenge, I'm actually having to go out of my comfort zone a little bit. He's maybe a bit skinny. I don't know. He looks a bit flat from this side. Oh, I can maybe change that. Buff this boy out a bit. There we go. That's a bit better. But yeah, the monkey. I'm really happy with it. I think it looks great. It's a great addition to this absolute... <laughs> <laughs> crazy monstrosity that we've got going so far. So we're officially two thirds of the way through and next up, we're gonna ask our good friend, Catherine, what we should build. Okay, this is kind of weird, but I challenge you to build a colorful claw machine with your friends' heads as prizes. <laughs> right, okay. That has to be surely quite a big claw machine. Maybe I fit that round here. There's a bit of a space here at the moment. I could use, you know, actual head size things, but that would be a boring claw machine. No, 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 no. We want to build a decent size one. Doesn't really fit into the build we've got so far, but maybe we'll make it work somehow. So we started off by, of course, building everyone's faces. I kind of already had greens, so I just used that again. I didn't go for like, you know, the outer textures of their skins, just the basic ones because 
I, I couldn't be bothered and also it's going to be picked up by a claw machine. You're not really going to focus on the skulls. Speaking of the claw machine, here is the colourful claw machine. We've got the sort of like white stuff. You put the skulls on there, which you'll see me do now as well as some on a shelf. We built up the glass around it, added in a funky background pattern, used some world edit to make this like really colourful, strange stuff. And then finally, we built the claw itself for picking up, you know, the YouTuber heads. A bit of a weird build, but we needed to finish some stuff in the background, so I built another mountain range. Uh, yeah, kind of obsessed with mountain ranges recently. So, gave this one a go, textured it a bit, and then, you know, added in some bone mill and made it look a bit nicer overall, before finally finishing up with a bit of pathway in front of this thing, and we're done. Now, I'm not gonna lie, trying to fit this into the background we already have has not gone very well. Uh, it kind of stands out quite a bit, but I I'm happy with it. It is a massive claw machine. Grab a tuba, it's called. And you've got all the tubers in here. YouTubers, that is, by the way, in case you were wondering what a tuba was. You've even got a little department bit here where you can get in and pick up your skull once it's dropped down. Obviously, there's normally a flap. I'm not going to build the flap because this is Minecraft and it doesn't work. No one's going to try and steal from this. I'm the only one in this world. But yeah, very happy with that. Very happy with our new mountain range as well. If we head over here and look at the full thing. <laughs> look at it, look at it. What a crazy build. What are we doing? This is ridiculous. But we have one last ridiculous thing to build, hopefully. We're at roughly about 19 and a half hours at the moment. So we have four and a half hours to build this final thing and I'm expecting it to be something crazy because I've asked my good friend good times with Scar. Let's see what he says. Hello my favorite chisel bean. I challenge thee to build a roller coaster car or a mine cart with my cat jelly inside holding up whatever you built or a portion of it. I'm generous that way. Anyway, happy building. Goodbye. Okay, what is it with people <laughs> wanting me to hold other stuff that I've built in the hand of the thing? <sighs> so basically, a massive jelly cat in a massive minecart slash roller coaster holding something up with their paws. Right, thanks, Scar. I know what I'm going to hold up. It's not going to be Evil Green because I think he fits in nicely there. But we are going to hold up this house. And with that means I'm actually going to move the house to in front of here. As I think the jelly cat could fit in nicely here in the minecart. This is definitely a weird build. I'm excited to see how this comes out. Will it take the full four and a half hours? Let's find out. So a tricky build. But I started off by building the rail itself. And I went for a sort of mix of like a roller coaster slash Minecraft. So I've got a minecart and a roller coaster track. This here is the track, obviously. I started off by building the track itself, then working on the wooden frame around it. I used some different colors. You'll see at the end here, I try and change it around a little bit in a second. But we did the inside first and made sure it was all, you know, secure and supportive. And here is where I'm just like messing around with the colors. I tried dark oak, spruce, all in between. And I ended up with spruce and uh, oak, I believe. But then we had to get working on the minecart itself. So I started with the actual minecart going for a Minecraft minecart. And I've added a little twist to the build here where I'm going to actually build Scar himself. I thought if Jelly was in the minecart, she can't really reach very far. So I thought, what if we put Scar in there and then we make him reach out holding Jelly and then Jelly can be reaching out for the final thing. So we got working on Jelly's face and I tried to make it like custom as you can see here and it ended up looking really weird. So I went more along the Minecraft version of Jelly and started building her out reaching for the up house. Yes, I moved the up house from Sausage's suggestion earlier over here and then finished off the rest of Jelly reaching out to it. And then I finished off by adding a bit of scenery, some trees and also bone milling the ground. And here is the final product. Do you know what? I love this. I think it looks so cool. Jelly's actually not holding the house like Scar said. Instead, she's just trying to reach out and grab it. I, I, I thought that was a bit funnier, uh, her trying to eat the house. For some reason, what? Where's that bit gone? Is this glitched? How's that happened? I can fix it kind of easily with world edit, but yeah, weird. Wonder what happened there. I also just realized I didn't actually finish off Jelly's tail. So let's just do that quickly. There we go. Anyway, it's finished now. Uh, I don't know what happened there. I don't remember deleting that, but I think 
We're gonna call it here, guys. Mainly because I'm running out of friends to bother. We have only reached the 22-hour mark, roughly. So we're missing out on two hours here. But if you look at how long I've spent with the World Open over two days, I, I feel like we've spent long enough. Here's the final build screenshot. Here it is with a bit of shaders. Kind of a bit too big to fit in. But I'm very happy. I think it's turned out quite weirdly marvellous. Even if none of these things fit together very well, I'm happy with it. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a like. And I'll see you in a time. Goodbye.